Hello, you guys. So I just have a quick word that I'm going to be delivering to y'all today. Um, Just being a light to the social media community. And for those that are just wondering, is there any hope? I'm here to share this. Um, I'll share some faith with y'all tonight. So, please excuse any background noise. Um, my son is in the bath. And then I also have some people that are not too far. That also are living in this building. So, yeah. Please excuse any background noise. And yeah, let's just go ahead and get right into this word. Pray in Jesus' name that you would just, um, the Holy Spirit would help you to have the wisdom to receive this word and apply it. Um, have discernment to know the season, how this can apply to the season that you're in. Um, yeah. If you're watching this and you feel that this is for you, then yeah. Um, just know that I said in one of my recent videos about how not only is it really good for you to have a personal relationship with God, obviously, but it's really good for you to kind of ask the Lord to reveal to you through the Holy Spirit Bible plan um yeah a Bible plan specific to the purpose and the calling that he has over your life and yeah I have been doing Bible plan so this is what I got from my reading today um and then after I go through this, I'm going to go ahead and actually read out some of what it is that I pulled this from. And then also, like, maybe even more. But, yeah, we shall see. So, yeah. Um, what is vanity? Vanity. Okay, this is the title of the word that I have for y'all today that um, the Lord is using to share with y'all. And that says point blank the end. Okay, Holy Spirit is speaking volumes with this word. Um Point blank the end. And God says, you know, when he when he when he brings forth the word, it is not to be played with. It is not to be like it's not it's, it's never it's never a joke. Okay. So you guys, um I'm getting a call right now, but I'm going to go ahead and finish this first. You guys, point blank the end. Um, so when God brings forth the word, right, God is bringing that forth for a reason. Um, knowing that his people are in need of this of the word and so that was basically that um this for really let to share that with you guys first so as long as there is space for persecution god is still needing us to glory him to glorify him to bring glory to him um okay so we in the beginning of this season, just feeling like it's been a very long season, but 
in the beginning of the season that I'm currently in, coming to kind of like the end of, the Lord just showed me, like, was really highlighting that to be thankful for the space because it is grace, right? So, this was a word where God was really revealing to me that what that space was all about. And so, basically, sorry, y'all. I'm so sorry, y'all. I had to do this thing like that. <laughs> Literally, I just... The wet hair feeling is not there. Wait, wait. I'm sorry. But yeah. Okay. <laughs> I feel like the um. Maybe I gotta back the camera up a little bit because the lighting is just really not. Focus picture. Okay, so this is just gonna have to do. But yeah, as long as there is space for persecution, God is still needing us to glorify Him. So, with the space, you guys. Being grateful because that's God's mercy. God allowing us to be able to still glory him. Okay. Um, God allowing us to humble ourselves and go ahead and um, bless his name. Right. So, okay. I really hope they can. Okay. <laughs> so anytime the enemy can steal from God's people is simply because it was corrupted with pride. That is what vanity is, you guys. Um So pride. Can you really say that you're God's people when you have pride? No, you cannot. That is not faithful. That is not um you know God is love. So Ignorance is never actually bliss. Heaven cannot be made counterfeit. You cannot make a fraud heavy. Like you cannot make you cannot make heaven to like yeah. There is just no way that you can duplicate or you can make over what God has already done. God has already made, when God makes it, it's perfect. And there is just no way that you can just try to have your own version of that. So, yeah, there is no way to make a counter for heaven. There is no way to make. i done. You're done. Can you wash your hair, please? Um, you can wash your hair. It's not. It's the door, what? No, it's not. You can wash your hair. Good. Go ahead. So, I'm going to try to hurry up and finish the story because, yeah, obviously, I don't got all the time. But, um, the time in the world. But anyways, you guys, heaven cannot be made counterfeit. There is no way that you can say, like, okay, this is, like, I'm going to make heaven to my liking, basically, right? There is no way that you can do that. Um, embracing the immediacy, severity, 
reality of our circumstances is absolutely vital to coming and you guys i'm gonna i'm still gonna wash this here just in case you was concerned <laughs> But that's absolutely vital to the coming of a breakthrough, right? So in order for us to, in order for us to see God ever come to like a saving, in order to ever to get to a saving point, it's so vital and just completely key that we actually recognize I talked about this in my video yesterday, but like kind of, but this is touching on it differently a little bit. So it's so vital to recognize like the actual, the actual need, like so vital to recognize that God is the only one that can do it. So vital to recognize that it is not going to be in our own strength, but it's going to be um, by the Holy Spirit. Not by might, not by power, okay? So anytime the enemy can steal, okay, I already went over that. Um, Yeah, things that glorify God are always united with the bond of peace. So always united with the bond of peace. Always united with the bond of peace. Anytime we have, um, you know, the, like I said, like the previous thing was, you know, the enemy cannot corrupt what is truly God, a God given. Like the enemy cannot corrupt what is truly like a bless, a completion, a blessing. Like heaven on earth cannot be corrupted by um, the enemy. And it is really actually that simple. I'm so sorry, y'all. I do not. I'm just on here. Like, literally, like, I think I'm going to be doing these words when I'm actually ready. Like, during the day. Because as much as I thought that these evening time words, like, I had actually... And not really got completely ready today. So I was bumming it. So that's probably why I did not come um, do one in the middle of the day today. But yeah. Anyways. So yeah. Always united with the bond of peace. Um, tops with love and sprinkle with humility. Okay. Like. What the Lord says goes, and that is that the enemy has no more power than that given to him by God. Okay, the enemy has no more power than God has given him. The enemy cannot sit there and, like... God is not the author of confusion. Like, the enemy thrives off of a spirit, like, off of a cowardly spirit, right? So, you resist the devil and the devil and the devil will flee, okay? Very simple. Therefore, be with wisdom when it comes to discerning that which is relevant versus that which has no power. And is solely... Um, hmm, I'm so sorry, you guys. It's solely and, uh, like it's only like it's running off of false humility. Um, so like charm, like charm and charm is deceitful, beauty is fleeting, right? So this false humility, like it's just never like it, it won't do, okay? 
it just won't do um we need to like have that not only being humble not only being faithful not only being loving but being genuine being solid like you cannot sit here and say that um you know you cannot love god and hate your neighbor okay that is that you cannot like be sitting here expecting the lord to forgive you when you aren't when you aren't forgiving someone else um you cannot sit here and expect god to extend grace to you when you haven't been gracious like you know does this make sense okay so i'm gonna go ahead and back this up with the scripture that i was going over today that had led me to like kind of writing that page down like i said i look crazy i'm so sorry you guys but yeah it will be getting better with time and when i come to deliver a word tomorrow i will definitely be um yeah i'm definitely coming dressed because this was just not it but yeah so this was isaiah 37 through 40 or 37 37 through 40 21 okay and then i also did a little bit i ended up finishing off 40 chapter 40 so i went to the end of that so basically in this um we have this king that excuse me what baby all right mommy's gonna come in one second okay mommy's about to come get you okay thank you so this is King Hezekiah. Um, you know, basically they were it was like mocking God. Um, and it turned out that there was a messenger sent. Um, he was like, I haven't seen God show up yet. Blah blah blah. Um, who do you think you? Or to you think that now like you guys think that you're so special that you're gonna get redeemed um basically so there was a messenger sent to hezekiah um the lord sent a messenger which i'm pretty sure was yeah i'm pretty sure it was um isaiah yeah and so isaiah went and told him that he was going to protect him from the enemies that he was facing um and it basically turned out that um yeah basically turned out that hezekiah ended up falling sick um because that was the first part of his redemption and so he went to the lord again and he was like god like what is going on um and really cried out to the lord this time with his heart not just for his physical redemption but for his spiritual redemption um realizing like okay i have the kingdom but now look at me like i'm withering away and it came out to the lord saying okay i'm going to extend your life okay and so after this um Gilly, what are you doing? Do not put that bath water in your mouth. Huh? I'm sorry, y'all. You guys, so it says here, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and go to a little more detail. Because so yeah, first, um, you know, guys just saying all the wonders that he's done and hmm okay so go to go and say to hezekiah this is five verse five thirty eight five 
Thus saith the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days fifteen years. Oh. So this was... No, that was last night. Okay. Hmm. No. Okay, yeah. Okay, I'm so sorry, you guys. So, yeah, thus saith the king, um... right you guys okay i don't know like i know that i just so i'm trying to give me give me a second because i am trying i am like i said i've been i'm pretty new to this so i did study this like earlier today and yesterday i guess too but basically hezekiah was facing some enemies um so it says here in 36 talking about hezekiah was saying like yeah that's not going to happen. You guys are not getting redeemed. Yada, yada. That is nonsense. And so... Um, who, what, what God is going to redeem y'all. So they held their peace. They answered him not a word. Um, for the king's commandment was saying, answer him not. Then came Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah. Hilkiah was over the household. Um, came to pass when King Hezekiah heard it, and he ran his clothes and covered him with his half cloth and went to the house of the Lord. He sent, and he sent El Eliakim, who was over the household, um, Hezekiah, this day of trouble, and of the rebuke of the blasphemy for the children not come to the birth, and there is not strength to bring forth. It may be the Lord thy God that will hear the words of Rabshakeh, um, whom the king of Assyria, his master, has sent to reproach the living God. And will reprove the words of the Lord that God hath heard. Wherever lift up my prayer for the room that is left. Um, Isaiah said unto them, Shall ye say unto your master, Thus saith the Lord, Be not afraid of the words thou hast heard, where the king's servant, where the servants of the king of Syria have blasphemed me. Behold, I will send a blast upon him, and shall hear rumor return to his own land. And I'll cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. So basically you have this king. He's holding on to a lot of vanity. Okay? Holding on to a whole lot of vanity, you guys. Um, If you really want to read it in depth, you can go ahead and read. Like I've given you guys, it's basically 36 through like 41. But basically, yeah, you have this king holding on to a whole lot of vanity. Um, but then the Lord redeems him. Okay, the Lord casts out this army that he was so... He just thought that that was going to be impossible. Um, and then we sit here and we see... talks about the daughter of zion the the virgin daughter like she has she has even um you know laughed at you like this is not like you know she is even accused you like this is not good and then we have Yeah, so the whole army got cast down. But then we also have... Um, it goes into another situation where... 
I think, like, maybe almost his was falling as well. And basically, then he comes to the Lord. And so not only did the Lord redeem him from the mess that was coming against him, but then God also went around and said, okay, well, now you need to also be humble because this is kind of how you got in this mess, okay? Um, and so it comes down to, yeah, him being redeemed as well. But then it says the mission of John the Baptist. And so basically it goes into talking about how God is just all powerful, okay? Um, no matter what it is that is happening in the physical realm, no matter how vast something may seem, God is able to, God is able to do like all of that. Like it's not like the Lord's spirit is like, you know, the whole purpose, like the Lord is the whole purpose of every, like child so good such a good word but um have ye not understood from the foundations of the earth it is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers that stretches that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in That bring the that bringeth the princes to nothing. He maketh the judges of the earth as vanity. Um, so it is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers that stretcheth that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain and spreadeth them out. As a tent to dwell in. Okay. Um Lift up your eyes on high and behold who hath created these things that bringeth out their host by number. He calleth them all by names by the greatness of his might. Um, to whom then will ye liken me or shall I be equal? Saith the Holy One. Okay, so none can compare to God. You know, that is one thing about God. Like, there is no, just like there's no counterfeiting heaven, there is no counterfeiting God. Okay. Um. Yeah, they shall not be planted. Yeah, they shall not be sown. Yeah, their stock shall not take root in the earth. And he shall also blow upon them and they shall wither in whirlwind shall take them and the whirlwind shall take them as stubble hast thou not known hast thou not heard that the everlasting god the lord the creator of the ends of the earth fainteth not neither is weary there is no searching of his understanding you guys when it comes to godly wisdom versus worldly wisdom there is no beating that um you know, people can search for answers in, in vain things and the physical things and the prideful things and the psychological things. But at the end of the day, God is one of a kind. Heaven is one of a kind. Okay, humans are one of a kind. Like, there is a certain imprint, okay, that is godly. Like, that is why there is a God-sized hole in your heart, okay? There is only one way. There's there's a narrow way. It's very simple. Like, there is a narrow road that the Lord intends for, um, for his people. And, you know, people cannot be fulfilled without the Lord. People cannot... Um, find true purpose without God and like and so this is for those that really care 
this is for those that really have passionately been seeking the Lord. And I know that this is going to be an answer for someone. I know this is going to be a confirmation for somebody. I know this is going to be um, a relief for somebody. So, yeah. Stay blessed, you guys. I love you. Thank you for watching. And um, as I said, I pray in Jesus' name that you would receive this, that peace beyond understanding would overcome you um, and just calm you, just um, reveal to you godly wisdom that your situation God is in control of, your situation God has a answer for, your situation God is bigger than, your situation has not gone unseen by the Lord. Your situation is something that is not too big for God to handle. But the number one thing is that you have to put it in the hands of the Lord. You cannot have one foot in, one foot out. You cannot be lukewarm, okay? You cannot be double-hearted, all right? Good night, y'all. And I don't know. Thank you. Um. Yeah, I just, I just, just stay blessed. Um. Like I said, I'm new to this, so excuse me if I'm not perfectly coming at y'all, but I'm trying and I'm doing what I feel is, um, what the Holy Spirit I feel is leading me to do. So, yeah, sharing a good word with you guys, um, trying to encourage you guys with the faith that the Lord has blessed me with. And I know that there is overflow to share. So, yeah.